$8,000 to get this thing sorted out and to take care of everything this customer wants all the way from New York. We're going to let you guys in the comments let us know, is it worth it? Let's get started. This is a 2007 Volvo S60R, all the way, like I mentioned, from New York. And it came with quite a laundry list of repairs, things that he had concerns about to kind of go through and check it over. We got very close on the estimate to almost what it would cost to just go buy another S60R. We're not there. That's why I haven't turned down the job. But any time in a shop where you can go buy another nice one for 10 grand and you want to put 15 into the car, that's when I say, nope, I'm not doing it. The reason why I've actually had people let us do all the work and then they go and drive and someone T-bones them or they get into an accident and the insurance pays them only market value and then I get a phone call and get cussed out. I wish you would have told me this before I did all this work. So that's why I'm very leery about exceeding the value of the car with the repair cost. But we haven't exceeded it. We're getting close to it, but we haven't even got to it yet. So we're still in the clear to get this taken care of. Let's take a look around it real quick. So here you can see it says six speed R. It does have the manual six speed and it is the R designation. It does have a cracked fog light down there. We did bring that to the customer's attention. They did not want to repair that at this time. So we will skip over that. As we go around to the side, you can see it has some 18 inch R wheels on it. I don't know if this car came from the factory with those or not. There is an issue with these wheels. I'll show you that here in a little bit, but let's take a look at the door jam, what it originally came with. So we can see it says 17 inch wheels is what it came with from the factory. I don't know at the factory or when it was bought new if there was some option that was added, but it is causing an issue in the front right wheel. As you can see, it's an S60R all wheel drive. It does have a little bit of fading on this little carbon fiber strip here. Overall, it's in decent condition. It has a little scrape down the side there and some paint peeling, different things like that going on. At some point, this customer may want to look into getting the car repainted or some body work done, but that will be done somewhere else. And that's not the concern that we have today. When these things are fully sorted, they actually are an awesome car. They're very fast. They have 300 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque out of a turbo inline five-cylinder engine. They're all-wheel drive, so all that power goes to all four wheels. They handle really well. They just really are a fun car. I can understand why the customer's putting the money into them because they're hard to find. And if you do find them in a good condition, they're gonna be over 10 grand easily. You don't see a lot of these, and they are, like I mentioned, they're just a blast to drive. So I get it. I understand why we're going to these great links to get everything sorted on this. Maybe when we get all this stuff done, the customer might look into getting some of the body work done at a professional paint shop, and this thing would be fully sorted and ready to rock. It's not got like two or 300,000 miles on it. It's only 120,000, so it should have quite a bit of life left in it. Here we are. This is a turbocharged engine, and it's a little dirty, but it has some issues with it that we're going to be looking at. It has a complaint about the power steering pump which actually turned out to be the steering rack. We'll show you here in a little bit. It does have a K&N air filter. I'm not a fan of those because it typically ruins the airflow sensor. These are supposed to be oiled. Some of them are actually just cotton and they may be okay, but if it's the oiled style, no one ever seems to maintain those. But I'm not sure which one that one is. We can see that it's had a timing belt service at some point in the past. I can't really read it, but at least it's been done. We do see it has a factory strut tower brace right there and also has, looks like some aftermarket cold air piping that's been put on. Otherwise, let's go ahead and look in the interior. Okay, ladies and gents, it looks like we have 120,475 miles on here. And this is not what we're used to seeing in a Volvo. This is definitely not a classic Volvo gauge cluster up there. It's really pretty and kind of shiny iridescent as well. As we move up to our dash, 
looking really good. There's no real problems up there. They have attached a phone case right here to keep that phone right there easy to see. But otherwise, looking really good. Looks like we have some choice on how we want this car to perform as it's driving. Do we want it to be in our comfort, sport, or advanced? So that's a fun selection that we can alter and adjust. We do have a aftermarket Pioneer stereo. This would not have been a stock Volvo item and does have a USB port added as well. As we move down, you see we've got some simple HVAC controls again. Not where we're used to seeing in a Volvo, but it does have dual climate control and heated seats. As we move down, yes, this is a six speed. So this thing would be so much fun to drive. Now you can't see, but there is the pattern on the top of that shift selector, but it's kind of hard to see right now. As we move down, got a couple of cup holders, got a hidey hole, and it flips all the way back, and it flips all the way back to make a cup holder for the back seat, and it flips up, and they've got like lights and cords and tape in there. Nothing too exciting. But that's kind of an interesting, it's a nice spot if you need a spot to hold your phone, and then kind of a fun way to do the cup holder in the back seat. The seats are leather and they've got a little bit of cracking on them, but the cracks are just in the surface, not actually going into the full depth of the leather. It does have some nice bolster on the sides and it is nice, quite, and plush. Definitely has a different headrest than what we think of as the three barred headrest we saw from classic Volvos, but this actually would be nice if we got on this and our head gets slammed back into it because of the G-Force. Door card has lovely black plastic with some of the blue leather and some aluminum accents as well. So it's really kind of pretty over there. Again, you can see a little bit of marking on that door, but again, with this many miles on this car, it's still presenting quite well. As we look at our back seat, we have the same kind of door card that we had in the front. We have more of the blue leather seats as well, and we have the kind of headrest that can lay flat, so we're not obstructing the view of the driver. But if we do have people in there, they can roll back. So that's kind of a nice handy feature if you don't have people in the back seat terribly often. It does look like it has a standard Volvo center armrest. I bet if we pull it down, we will have a, oh, we do. We have another cup holder and a nice little hidey hole. And I bet anything, if we pull that down, there's a pass through for skis into the back. As we move up, headliner's in good shape. No marks, nothing going on up there. Just a nice dove gray sea of fabric. The rear view mirror is a bit interesting. I have never seen this happen before. That, you can see obviously our light on there, but um, I've never seen one actually have this kind of wear on it. Um, but again, that's something that's pretty simple to change out. It's something you probably find on eBay and replace that out. But it is still quite functional. You can see through it. It's just got a bit of a haze to it. So we do have a special R edition steering wheel and it has some lovely Alcantara on the sides and the flat part on the bottom to make it easier to get in and out of the car. So hmm, this is presented quite well. I'm curious what we're gonna find on the underneath. So here's our radiator core support. I'm not seeing anything leaking there. There's not really any serious leaks on this car, but we will see one here in a little bit. Here's our uh, wheels here. You can see it's had some calipers replaced in the past, but one thing we can see is the little nipple coming out is so rusted and so corroded. And we're also seeing lots of rust on the, the lines, and also this brake hose is bad, so as soon as we go to remove this from the caliper, it's going to destroy any kind of connection to the caliper, which makes this caliper useless. It looks like at some point it did have a leak going on on the CV boot, but someone repaired it. It's no longer leaking, so we will leave that be. The customer might be at some point could clean that up. But let's check the brake pads. They got quite a bit of life left in them. Sway bar link is good. Pads are good there. Nothing loose. Sway bar links are good. There's been some parts replaced. We can see the control arms, sway bar links, maybe some struts. Some things have been replaced on here. We do see a leak going on here. It's actually this steering rack is leaking fluid out of it. And that's where air is getting into the system. And it's making very much noise with 
the actual power steering pump. So that's one of the quotes we're doing. One complaint the customer has is they can feel heat on the passenger floorboard and the reason why is that that flex joint there on the exhaust is actually cracked and just spraying exhaust all over the pan or the floor pan I should say making it get very hot so we're going to take that over to our local exhaust guy and let him put a new flex joint on weld that on and that'll take care of that you can see it's from the northeast it does have some rust a lot of the brake lines and things are rusted we're going to be replacing those as well as needed here's our exhaust there's our drive shaft it is all-wheel drive so get back to the back you can see it's got like an oval shaped exhaust so it doesn't hang down as low and it looks like at one time that the drive shaft was actually contacting the exhaust or something something was touching right there it's no longer doing it but it rubbed it pretty good and as we move back to the back you can see some more of the northeast rust there's nothing majorly serious but anytime you go to take apart anything with rust like that you can expect things to start crumbling brake pads are fairly good cv joints are good sway bar link is good nothing loose struts are dry brake pads are good cv joints are good sway bar link is good everything is nice and tight now i mentioned 18 inch wheels and there's some rubbing that's going on let's go ahead and hop up to the front right wheel well so the customer actually complained about some rubbing noises going on we actually found where it's coming from and it's these wheels that are wide enough just enough to contact the inner wheel well on a sharp turn you can see it's actually touching the wheel well and rubbing that is the rubbing noise you can see it there it's not damaging anything and one thing we're going to look at when we replace the steering rack is to see maybe it wasn't set up properly or something's wrong with the adjustments but if that's not the case then maybe the wheels or tires or something will have to be changed out in the future and that will solve that let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground So on the surface it doesn't seem like it has a whole lot of issues but it came in with a list of complaints and we have the answer to all those complaints and an associated cost with them. Keep in mind the parts on a Volvo S60R are not going to be cheap Chevy truck level pricing. It's going to be expensive. Just like there was a error on the dash, traction control, things like that going on, it ended up being the steering angle sensor which is the clock spring behind the steering wheel. An OEM Volvo steering clock spring is four or five hundred bucks. Then you have the labor to take it all apart, then you have to redo the calibration. It's going to be easily seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. I think it's going to be upwards of nine hundred dollars to do that, depending on how much time is involved. There's the rubbing in the front end. We already showed you what's going on with that. We're going to try with the steering rack to see if we can alleviate that. And the steering rack is leaking, causing the noises and things going on. We're going to replace that. It's going to be two grand for the rack between the alignment and the parts and everything. And over half the cost is the rack itself. We have a belt squeak and the tensioner, the idler pulley and the belt are all just old and worn. They need to be replaced. That's a few hundred bucks. The window regulator, I believe it's on the driver's side. It's kind of the windows getting kind of wonky and it's making squeaking noises and doing weird things. The regulator itself is bad. Parts and labor on that, it's going to be six or seven hundred bucks. There's heat in the footwell that we talked about. It's coming from a cracked flex joint on the exhaust. We called our exhaust guy and say, what do you think it's going to be cost to do that? He said two or three hundred bucks, maybe a little more. You see it's starting to add up fast. It doesn't take long for another grand to add up and then another grand to add up. We're not done yet. It does have a transmission issue while you're driving. It'll just pop out of gear. It grinds into reverse and we drain just a little bit of fluid out and there's a lot of metal material, which means probably the synchronizers are going bad or something's wrong with it. I called a couple shops around here that rebuild transmissions and when I mentioned Volvo, they instantly said, nope, nope, we're not gonna rebuild that. So I'm not gonna be able to help the customer with that and I'm not gonna put a used one in and then, then go all the way back to New York and have the transmission give out or something because it was a faulty salvage transmission or that will have to be solved in New York by a transmission specialty shop in the area that's just not something we're comfortable doing for such a long distance and no one around here wants to rebuild it and we don't rebuild transmissions here either so that would add another probably four or five grand but we're not going to do that here so that's being kept off the bill there's brake hoses, there's brake lines that are severely rusted, 
And we showed you on the caliper, when we go to replace those hoses, it's very likely going to damage the calipers. The customer is aware, we told him up front, before we even touched anything, said this is very likely what's going to happen. If everything breaks, as we anticipate it probably will, this could easily exceed $1,000 to $1,500. If we have to buy good used calipers, which there really aren't new ones out there, good used, good condition calipers that aren't rusted, that are the S60, actual S60R calipers, they can be $400 for a pair. So there you go. It's very expensive, very fast. Then we've got an oil change and a few other services and small things going on. And when you start adding it all up and you tack on the sales tax and everything, you're at seven or eight grand. Right, like I mentioned, I'm right at the line where it's almost not worth it. If it was going to be nine or 10 or $11,000 to fix all this, I may actually call the customer and say, I really recommend you find another vehicle. This is not going to be worth it. But we're just a little bit under the line, so we're going to go ahead and proceed. The customer's actually paid half up front already, which means the customer's good for the money. We're good for our work. We're going to get it done and take care of it for them. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on this Volvo or any other car in the shop, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut. Really appreciate it and make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.